Martha, this is the second show of Interior Lifestyle in Tokyo, and it's the first time that we can greet you as a guest. What are your first impressions? Well, I think you have a very excellent assortment of um, manufacturers um, and of uh, companies uh, who um, sell this beautiful product. Uh, I'm pretty impressed, um, and uh, even though it's smaller than the Ambienta in, in uh, Frankfurt, uh, you have a very good distribution of ideas here, all kinds of products. Glad to hear. So what besides size, from your point of view, are the major differences to Frankfurt? Um, well, uh, the people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a completely uh, different mood, isn't and it? Yes, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, also the time of year, mm -hmm. but, um, but it's a very different mood, um, and the space here is excellent. I like the space very much. Um, and uh, easy access to all the booths, yeah. um, it's, a, it's spacious, and I think the vendors are all very, very happy to, um, um, to, be, to be here. Everybody's very friendly. Uh, now this show, um, in contrast to Frankfurt, where we cover from high-end brands design to sourcing companies, this show is very much concentrated on high-end design and um, crafts companies. I'm curious because you make it your task, we all know you have this beautiful ecological farm, but you made it your task to bring good products to a broader market. How to translate the kind of high-end handicraft product you see here to a broader market? Well, it's a lot about design and it's about taking the best uh, in design and the best in um, methods of manufacturing and uh, doing them for the mass market, uh, not in lesser materials necessarily, but uh, when, it's all about mathematics. When you uh, do um, great production, mm -hmm. lots, big numbers of production, uh, you can actually manufacture things less expensively. It mm -hmm. works that way. So it's always been my dream and, 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 and our strategy to um, take great design, great manufacturing, great materials, raw materials, and turn it into uh, appropriate uh, product for everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if our stuff is less expensive um, on the retail pyramid, um, it's still very long-lived. It's not uh, for just instant gratification. It's really well-made. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I believe that you can do that, and we have done it consistently for many years now. What I noticed is that there are some trends you would find in this show that I regard as completely international. Sustainability is a big theme here, eco-consciousness, also urban gardening, oh, or yes. gardening in small spaces. And I, when I was just in New York, I learned that also there you are a sponsor of public gardening projects there. Oh, we are, uh, indeed. Um, our offices happen to be uh, facing the Hudson River and right um, uh, adjacent to the Hudson River Park system, which is a, uh, a very excellent um, community um, foundation, mm -hmm. really, for um, building up and maintaining the parks along the Hudson River, all the way from 59th Street down to Battery Park. And I just joined the board of that foundation, and it's, I'm very excited about it because uh, it's what we look at and what we use each and every day. Um, there's another park that has recently been established in New York, which has become wildly popular, and that is the uh, High Line. The High Line stretches from 34th Street down to um, about 14th or 13th Street, and it's an unused, um, actually it had become a derelict, um, portion of the subway system, the elevated subway system in New York. And they were thinking actually of tearing it down. It was weed covered and garbage strewn 
and they were thinking of tearing it down at great expense. It was much cheaper to leave it and transform mm -hmm. it into a public walkway uh, and a place to sit and a scenic views of the whole downtown, uh, that part of New York, sort of what we call Chelsea, uh, and the meatpacking district. We're so excited about it. And it is a charming place. What is interesting in this context that actually this island, this fairground is on, which is the biggest and most modern fairground in Japan, Tokyo Big Side, and all our shows are held here, is an artificial island yes. that was founded like 25 years ago. It's land, rest it's land yeah. reclamation, Absolutely. really. And, uh, and again, Japan's famous for that mm. because they have so little land. Mm -hmm. It's a small island with a lot of people. Uh, and when you go to Osaka and see the airport that was built on a reclaimed land Absolutely. in the middle of the sea, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of fascinating. Uh, but again, it's uh, one way to use up uh, uh, landfill, and we, mm -hmm. we, you know, they have all, you have a lot of landfill when you when you have the trash and garbage from a huge population, and this is a good way to use it, I think. But what you mentioned is that, and I think this comes, we come back to product design here, that a country like Japan, people have to deal with much smaller spaces. Like, uh, for example, in Germany or in the US, the, the average person has a much bigger apartment, much more space, an own garden maybe even. Um, I also found that in this show you see a lot of products for uh, maintenance and keeping things in order. But also I think this translates to the US market a little because you have, instead of having a lot of cupboards like we do, you often have, often have this walk-in closets. But in general, is it a big task to translate product as you are expanding from one market to another? Oh, it's a big challenge. And you have to pay attention to the country in which you are mm -hmm. planning to sell. There is alteration to design, absolutely. Uh, the Japanese, just think about it. Um, it's no one has giant bath towels mm -hmm. because the washers and dryers are much smaller. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you know, you can fill your washer with one towel instead of many. Uh, and so you have to, uh, de you know, decrease the size of the towels. The beds are smaller, so mm -hmm. the sheets are smaller. Um, the dishes are smaller. Well, also because of the way the Japanese eat, uh, smaller portions, more portions. Okay. Um, and uh, so the dishwashers are tiny if there are dishwashers. Uh, so everything has to be really accounted for and in, in design and altered to fit the particular market in which you are going to sell. That said, um, so much of the th so many of the things that we design are so coveted by other countries. Mm -hmm. They want the st lifestyle. Uh, that is set by someone like me. They want to emulate, and uh, and then uh, so that's so the challenge is also a pleasure because you're giving them what they need and what they want at the same time. Um, but as you said, you are here strongly represented in in the handicraft in the craft departments. Are there also? how should I say, challenges on levels of symbols. I mean, it's other holidays here. Um, I know that white flowers have a completely different meaning to well, uh, Europe. Well, it's it's like, take the weddings industry, because that's, that's something that, you know, the Japanese get married in traditional dress, and then they change their clothes and get married again in a Western gown. Um, the weddings, um, our weddings magazine is very popular here because, mm -hmm. uh, again, it's emulation. It's uh, they take those ideas and they really adapt them to their particular uh, lifestyle. And uh, holidays, uh, we published um, our magazine here for many years, um, and the um, and very little alteration goes in into the celebrating of, of holidays. They, they love our holidays, mm -hmm. too, the way we celebrate. And it's not like there are no uh, people celebrating Christmas in Japan. There are many. Yeah, even in Shanghai, I have to say, yes. you find fabulous Christmas decorations oh, yes. throughout the season. Yeah. Really overwhelming. So again, the world is becoming very flat. And, uh, and the, uh, the celebration of traditions, the, uh, the treatment of, um, of a lifestyle, um, everyday lifestyle, is uh, getting to be more and more homogeneous. 
What, uh, but what I also find fascinating, I mean, we do in a way we do the same as Messe Frankfurt. We were like the first trade show organizer to export trade shows to other countries, to export brands. We started this 25 years ago and this show was found in 1991. Um, but yet we also always try to find the balance between what to export our standards like talents, like next, like cafes on the fairground and what to adjust to the country we go to, what we need local stuff for. So if you go to other markets, you have people who are from this market oh, too? Oh yes. Oh yes, I traveled here in Japan with a friend, Momoko Sano, who um, has been um, really an advisor to me since 1982, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, and she knows what our brand stands for, she knows what uh, we look for, um, and she's uh, always doing research and, and uh, filling us in on the newest, best things here. Um, and, uh, and that's very important. It's very important to have advice and take advice from the countries in which you are working. I completely agree. I mean, we have our own office here, and frankly, we could not do it from Frankfurt without an office here. Oh, no, no. Here. You definitely need um, input yeah. from the from the uh, locale in which you are yeah, working. I completely agree. Yeah, thank you. Do you have a question? Um, yeah, I just, I just thought of something that, that was interesting. Oh, um, uh, one thing that I found uh, in the show here is the use of some very interesting materials. Um, there is a lot of laminated wood, manufactured mm -hmm. wood being used in very nice ways. And very thin sometimes, oh, yes. unbelievable. Oh yeah, thin and strong. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that trend is very, very good because of the shortage of wood. Uh, they're using particles and mm -hmm. pressing them and it's like, it's, it's almost like making layered plywood. But uh, again, going back to uh, woodwork that was popular in uh, Scandinavian countries, the mm -hmm. bent wood, uh, also in Germany. Now you're seeing it a lot in molded products here, and it's beautiful, totally beautiful. Where heretofore, the Japan Japanese have been very uh, particular about pure wood, and, uh, and even though it was very, very thin, it was just uh, wood. Yeah, but I, could, I agree, but I also saw a lot in this show um, and I think we will see more of this also in Europe, is quite unusual combination of natural material with, with plastic, colorful plastic, yes. uh, the combination of material in general. And one of the products I found here, which I think is a world premiere, is this uh, new yarn made of paper. Oh. And it feels yeah. like linen actually, and from what I understood, it even has similar qualities, but it is made of waste that is left over in paper production. So it looks beautiful and the even luxurious. Of the pulp, yeah. right, right. But at the other hand, it is actually a sustainability product. Mm -hmm. No, that's good too. I mean, I, I like to see them uh, see a, a, a country or a, or a region using uh, products that, that there's a, a, a lot of. Uh, linen is becoming mm -hmm. very popular. Linen, which had become very expensive, is now in many places cheaper than cotton. Mm -hmm. uh, because the demand of, for cotton had go grown so huge, and also weather affects cotton tremendously, so if the, the whole crop can be ruined in a country if there's bad weather. Absolutely. Another trend that I see here in Japan is an attention to fineness. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be expensive, but I think also it's, uh, it's attention to delicacy with strength. The glass that they're blowing now is so, so thin. thin and it's gorgeous. And the porcelain that they're making is strong but thin. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, very nice. I, I love all of that. I think it's, I think it's modern, I think it's uh, contemporary, I think it's beautiful and it's useful. Yeah, I, I also I have to say I saw quite a number of new products, for example the class, the class we managed to bring over to Frankfurt already a few years ago and having this show we of course also work with our Japanese office on bringing many of these companies to the European and international markets as well. So thank you. Well, thank you. It's very interesting always to talk to you <laughs> it's fine. and get the international viewpoint. Thank you. Thank you.